free speech rules here at Democratic Earth. There are two videos out there that have been sort of floating around that are very popular. And they're basically on things things girls don't understand about guys. That's the title of the video. Now, what, I want to sort of just touch on one area, and that's sort of the washing of the hands. Most of the differences between guys and girls that girls don't understand have to do with uh, the, ana the uh, anatomical differences. For boys, hygiene isn't as a necessity as it is for girls because the number of diseases that can affect boys due to hygiene issues is not the same as it is for girls. So girls from a younger age due to these uh, biological differences uh, develop a sense of cleanliness and hygiene that boys typically don't have. And you can even take a look at this in the, in the, in the snacks that the girls have. Uh, girls snacks typically they will fix themselves something. And it's typically fruit or you know they'll, they'll on average eat healthier than boys do. Boys will and, and, and guys or however you want to classify it uh, typically grab something to eat. There's no real thought behind it. It is as it says, as it sounds. They grab something to eat and that's it. So this grabbing something to eat contributes a lot to what goes on in the uh, stomach and intestines. And of course, as more and more food is grabbed in terms of the quantity and the, and the varying size size and types of uh, uh, of whatever they're grabbing consequently or subsequently uh, the uh, in an equivalent amount of gas per volume of food eaten will be produced so this results in the boys tooting significantly more often than, than the girls do. But it's because guys, uh, cleanliness is not specifically an issue. It becomes sort of a status symbol to a certain degree when other guys are around. If other guys aren't around and there's a mixed presence then there's the effort to blame it on the other person or as uh, George Carlin said, you blame it on the dog. You know, you're in mixed company in your room, you uh, let one go, you fart and rather than taking the claim for it because there's a mixed audience uh, you blame it on the dog if there's a dog in the room or you just say there was a dog in the room and uh, no one saw him and he just left. So that's the gas issue. The hygiene issue continues on uh, with the gas as an extension as a result of the hygiene issue in terms of how guys eat and the amount that guys eat. But as for washing the hands in the bathroom after you uh, go to the bathroom, it really depends on what bathroom you're in. If you're in a public bathroom, then there's some bad news. It doesn't, if you're in a public bathroom, it doesn't matter whether you wash your hands or not. Because the cleanliness factor is, neg is negligible. I'll give you an example of what happened. This happens, and this is the result of, uh, of uh, understanding virology, and this is the, 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 the spread of viruses and uh, microbes uh, in that uh, microscopic world. It's well known in the virology community that the immune system 
requires a certain amount of microbes to be encountered in order to be healthy. I mean, it, 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 if you lock off all microbes, you, you have a, a completely sterile and clean environment all the time, you're not going to be healthier. You're actually going to be less healthy because your immune system will not know how to, how to it will, will never develop. The immune system only develops in the presence of microbes and, and bacteria, viruses, and so on and so forth. No, if this isn't present, then no immunity develops. And in many cases, this is where you see these autoimmune diseases, uh, these things you know, like, like food allergies that kill people, like peanut allergies and stuff like that. These are primarily pre present in very clean households uh, and are less prevalent in third world countries you, in, in third world countries that are where kids are exposed to dirt and are actually eating some of the dirt uh, these autoimmune diseases really don't show up as much so it has to do uh, a lot of these autoimmune diseases uh, can be traced back to uh, the cleanliness of the environment. If an environment is too clean and there's not enough exposure to the microbe world around you, then your immune system starts to shut down and you get these autoimmune diseases. On the other hand, if there is too much exposure to the microbes, this is when you get sick. So what happens in the public bathroom? Well, let's look at actually what hap what does happen. You go to the bathroom, you come out, and because you've gone to the bathroom, you haven't yet washed your hands, all the microbes and everything that you've touched is still on your hands. The faucets that turn on the water are touched with these dirty hands, and the microbes are transferred transferred to the uh, faucets. You wash your hands, you rinse first, then you cut through and touch to wet your hands, then you go touch the soap or the soap dispenser. You put your hands back under the, under the water, wash it, and then what happens? After you've cleaned your hands with the soap, you touch the infected uh, knobs again. Well, with your hands still wet, and then you go dry your hands on a dryer or a towel. Again, if it's a dryer, like a common dryer, and you touch that common uh, that thing, you now, because your hands, even after you've cleaned them, touch the dirty faucets, they're dirty again. The microbes have transferred back onto your hands from the faucets. Then you transfer that wet environment, and the thing is, uh, uh, microbes love wet environments. They, they thrive in wet environments. So you leave the sink, you go over to the hand dryer, you press the button on the hand dryer, transferring all the microbes that were on the faucet that were previously in the toilet, and on a toilet seat, and on your body, to the hand dryer button. Then you dry your hands, and if it's not long enough, you hit the dryer button again. Remember that dryer button is affected? Dry your hands some more, then you go touch the door handle to go outside. Well, you've just transferred all of the microbes that were on the toilet that you were supposed to wash off has now been transferred onto your, back onto your hands again, and is now still present on your hands even after you've washed. Because the entire environment around you had been contaminated. And the thing is, now repeat this process for everybody who goes into a public bathroom. So when you're touching the, the faucet in a public bathroom, you're touching everybody else's microbes and diseases. That, contamin that faucet, if it stays wet, if that environment that stays wet like that, if the, if, if the, if the, the area isn't dried and cleaned, disinfected afterwards, stays contaminated, 
and you wash your hands in that public bathroom, your hands will have the contaminate all the contamination that the public bathroom has is on your hands even if you wash your hands in a public bathroom. So how do you make sure you clean yourself in the public bathroom? Touch as little as possible. Uh, there are these uh, alcohol wipes that you get in these little tiny little uh, restaurant packages. Uh, after you uh, go into the bathroom, uh, just wipe your hand like that with the, with the cloth, throw it in the toilet uh, with a tissue paper uh, that you have or a Kleenex that you have in your pocket. Wipe your hands. Use that tissue paper to flush the toilet if it's a, if it's a thing, and then walk out. Touching as little as possible in the uh, public bathrooms. This will reduce the amount of contaminants and the microbes that are on your hands. That's the cleanliness. So the thing is, is that this whole argument back and forth between boys and girls of, of washing your hands in the, in the public bathroom uh, is not really much of an issue. Because both uh, end up um, leaving as contaminated as they came in. So, and this is this this is this is true. F there are e microbes that, and this is true for STDs, that survive cleanliness. If you take a shower on a regular basis, and most people do take, take a shower on a regular basis, this does not protect you, even though you're 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 clean. From STDs. If both partners are clean, taking showers, this does not protect you from STDs. These things go beyond these infections, these viruses go beyond uh, the standard issue of hygiene because the the microbes survive the 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 uh, the efforts of hygiene that we've we've put into it. So cleanliness and hygiene is more or less relative. So, but the thing is, guys who are generally less hygienic than, than girls, and this is again due to their biology. They don't it's because guys don't have to be hygienic. Girls do because of the biology. So, hope this under, helps help, helps girls understand a little bit more about guys. Uh, the one thing I do want to add in there is that guys will respond better to girls who are more like their mothers, particularly if they respect their mothers, than girls who are what guys would refer to as disposable. So it's your choice. You have two choices with guys. Be their mother or be disposable. Have a great day. Speech, rules, here, at Democratic Earth.